What's up guys? Sean here. Sean here <laughs> with Shock Surplus. Uh, we've got Bowman's Bronco and this is the official kind of, not even the start of our buyer's guide. We're actually on stage four. four if you St count the stage, broken one. Stage three blew up on us. <laughs> stage one was the ESGV Shocks and then stage two was the Bill Stein 5100s. So we're gonna talk about both of these today. Uh, we did a lot of testing on the stock Bill Stein, and then we did a pretty good amount of driving on the Bill Stein 5100s, uh, mostly from Bowman's perspective. So yeah. how did this thing feel off the lot? You know, establish a baseline for kind of what to expect out of this Bronco and where we're kind of going with it. So I think they did a good job for off-road valving, but I would be lying to you if they were not kind of firm on the street. Uh, driving around, particularly like uh, expansion joints on the freeway, or at lower speeds over kind of nasty roads, you were just doing the eBay coilover bounce a little bit. Um, and even off-road at more moderate speeds, they were kind of just stiff. You bounced around a good bit. But when you really started to push it and hit stuff hard and kind of start to party, they were there for you. The only thing was there was some situations where they made you feel like you had more confidence, or they gave you more confidence in the shocks than they maybe had in dampening force. So you'd be cruising down the section, flying, and then suddenly, boom, it would bottom out, particularly in the rear. Mm -hmm. um, with it being a two-door, when you would bottom out the rear and the um, jounce stop in the rear would hit, if it wasn't the same amount of force on both sides, it would just want to swap ends. And I think we have some good videos of me smoking a good bush. It w did feel kind of loose and kind of hard to control when you were really pushing it, but they were supportive when you needed them to be. The 5100s and, though. And by support, you know, we use, a, we use this word support around here a lot, low speed support, mid speed support, and that's like really like damping. Yeah. Like low speed support is daily driven kind of stuff commute, highway, easy gravel, mid-speed support is when you're when you're on the pedal 20, 30, 40 miles an hour yeah. through kind of the not really rough stuff, but moderate stuff to really start articulating that suspension. So when we talk about support, mid-speed support, low-speed support, those are the kind of the terms where we're, we're, we're getting at. Yeah, yeah. and for low-speed stuff, mid-speed stuff, they were just too stiff. For high-speed stuff, they were great until they surprised you, but mm -hmm. Up until then, they were probably the hardest you could charge on a two inch body shock that I've ever seen. The 5100s though, way more comfortable everywhere else. Yeah. I did find though, they don't have that high speed support. Mm -hmm. It would just blow through, blow through the travel and just be bottoming out and topping out way too easily, right? Yeah, way too easily. So they almost gave you a little bit more confidence um, because at lower speeds, in mid speeds, it was like riding on a you know a couch. It was I was actually very surprised at how well they did. So much soft. The Bill Stein 5100 is much softer on the daily drive on the easy stuff. Like it was just more more compliant, a little bit more just softer overall, right? Now I say this with a caveat: without too much more body roll, if it any. Oh yeah. The one issue we ran into is it, they did have a lot of brake dive, but I think that was a factor of we wanted to do a street comparison, stock ride height to stock Sasquatch ride height. And mm -hmm. I think at the lowest circlip setting for the Sasquatch models that we had those on, yeah. just wasn't enough preload on the front coils to where if you stumped on the brakes, you would be looking at the floor and it would even take a couple seconds after you stop. Maybe not a couple seconds, but you know, a brief moment before it even settled back. Everywhere else, spectacular. And I think that could be 100% ironed out if you took the time, one, to not just keep it stock height. Uh, and two, probably try to level it so that, you know, there's more even weight distribu distribution front and mm. rear. Take some weight off the front and it won't want to yeah. hop on those front tires as bad. So the 5100s on the Bronco have, you can see here, there's there's two different sets of grooves. And you were saying, so for vehicles that have the Haas 2.0 yeah. suspension, Badlands, Wild Track, or anything with the Sasquatch. Yeah, you're up here on these grooves, on the top set of grooves. And then the other one, uh, you, you mentioned the Hitachi Springs, yeah. or the Hitachi Shocks, uh, down here on these set of springs. And so uh, the spring lengths between the vehicles are different. And you were also mentioning that like shorter spring probably matches up with having to clear, uh, clear the, the reservoir. reservoir. Yeah, so just some little, e not Easter eggs, but little knowledge pieces behind the design of kind of bow shocks. Yeah, and part of the lack of the preload thing comes from the 5100 is longer than the stock ESCV the, by probably about half an inch or a little bit more. If the preload height or the lower spring height is the same on both, then your effective preload is less. 
Uh, normally we say preload doesn't make that much of a difference in ride quality, but I just don't, there's physically just not enough at that lowest setting. So yeah. if you do it, these are one of those situations where actually set it to the top, set it as high as you can put it. And I think they'll actually perform better mm -hmm. than they did for me. <laughs> Watching you drive on the 5100s off-road, <laughs> it doesn't look like much of a good time versus uh, the good time that we had on the ESCV setup. Like, yeah, granted, if you're mountain trails and all that, the Bilstein 5100s are probably your jam because it's just more comfortable. I prefer a tight, a tight system. Oh yeah. And kind of comfort is secondary for me. Pick and choose, right? So that's why we're kind of doing this. And stage one and stage two, stage three was the Icon 2.5 EXP. P shocks, which we had limited experience on, but what we're doing from here is probably have at least four to five sets of shocks that are immediately on our radar to, to get on. So we had the Icon 2.5s on, those didn't last that long. And then we have the Eibach 2.0 Pro Truck coilovers on all four corners right now. So we'll kind of leave that review till later. Um, here is we kind of just wanted to establish the baseline for what we're doing on Bowman's Bronco and kind of setting expectations, setting the, the path forward for the Bronco buyer's guide. Well, so I, one thing I probably wanted to touch on is Eibach now has lift springs oh, yeah. that you can run on your stock ESC V shocks. And I think that is something you could very much compare to a 5100. Even if you have a Sasquatch package, there's actually probably a package, one of those two options that are better for you. If you like to party off-road, stay with the stock stuff, get a spring on it, you'll love it. Just deal with it being a little bouncy when you're going slow, but the- You've got, you're on, you're on 37s too, so substantially more weight, right? Yeah, well, and I wasn't on the time when we were testing. Okay, so true. the 37s came on after the 5100s, and I don't think you should even try to put 37s on the 5100. Okay. I found that I basically smoked a couple tabs and tore my fender liners with the stock 35s. That's not because Bill Stein didn't do their testing to make sure it bumps out at the right place. I think I just smoked my stock bump stop so hard that it bottomed out further than it was supposed to. If you had a 37, it's just not gonna clear. And I don't think there's enough dampening force for the 37. I have the iBlock 2.0s now. They work pretty great, but I can feel that 37 inches of tire is about all they wanna live with. Gotcha. Um, but going back to the 5100 and the ESCV, for most people, if you're just cruising on the trail, get the 5100s. Even if you have the stock ESCVs, you'll be actually happy with the fact that you can go 10 to 25 miles an hour down the trail, not be stuck at five or going 55, which is how yeah. the stock ones were. You going real slow because it's stiff and you just are tired of getting bounced around or like you just have to so smash much, on it. So much chatter, right? Yeah. And we're talking about like trail chatter, which yeah. is like all the time. When we were doing the testing from JV to um, Big Bear, I was more comfortable going 40, 50 down the, the whoop section we were testing Yeah. than I was going 20 miles an hour on the fire road to find a campsite. Yeah. I was like, at the end of that drive, I wanted to get out of that car so fast, <laughs> which I know with a 5100s, I would have just been cruising one hand on the wheel like, like I was on yeah. paved road. Now we found with 5100s, you go a little harder and Seems like there's a sweet, sweet spot, spot there. Just kind of the nature of digressive shocks, it's kind of just like the faster you go. Well, actually the nature of a lot of high performance shocks, faster you go usually is the smoother they get, but that's really obvious with, uh, a, digress. with, with a digressive shock yeah. like Bill Stein. Yeah. They're known for feeling a lot of chatter up front and then wow, this is really smooth at the, at the higher speeds. At the higher speeds. And so the 5100s allow you to bring that speed down Mm. which is very nice to be for, comfortable to be comfortable they're yeah. a little bit longer so they articulate better on the trail would you do the 5100s as a leveling solution versus escv plus a collar or strut baster first of all i've lived with ebay coilovers for most of my life so like you know some max peating rod bounce i can live with but i need the support where you know, 5100s are great and I did like what they could do, but I did miss the ability to be able to really smash on things. So we've got an Eibach 2.0 Pro Truck review coming up and then we've got Bilstein 6100s. 6100s, yeah. yeah. The Bilstein 6100s are coming super soon after these Eibach. Then we got Icon, then we got probably Fox and probably got King. This Bronco is gonna see a lot, quite a few more systems in it before uh, the end of 23. Well, yeah. And 
I think I think we'll find the right one for you guys too at some point. I've, and the reason why we're looking at all these different options is just like I said, the 5100s aren't for me, but they're great. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of shocks that are gonna be great. They might not be for you. So yep. that's why we're trying them all and gonna figure out, you know, kind of where they slot in. Cause there's a lot of coilovers that are similar price similar design yeah. but their tuning ethos who they're designed for is very different so so we got a broncos buyer's guide that is linked up in the description hit us up in the comments let us know you know what you guys want to see tested in what environments high speed low speed rock crawling mountains overlanding uh, there's there's so many different uses for this bronco i love driving it myself uh, when i get the chance thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next up